What's up, you box office bitches and bitchettes? How are y'all doing on this fine Thursday? I, of course, since I am coming to you on Thursday, am coming back with another Top 5 Thursday. And this one's for Adam Walls. I think I've done a couple of his before. He's been a good friend that we met through the group. So thanks for keeping on, Adam. And hopefully this Top 5 Thursday does you well. He is having me do Top 5 Judd Apatow movies. Now, you know... He's produced a lot of movies, more than I even realized, because there was a lot less films that he's directed than I even realized. Because I guess because he was like the hottest director, they just love to just strap his name and put it on the very front, almost like he was the director. But really, it's like Judd Apatow presents or Judd Apatow, a Judd Apatow produced film. So I was actually really taken back when I realized he's barely made over five films. But luckily. They're all good ones. Also has some acting credits in there. I wrote down like one note. I don't even write notes for this normally, so I don't even know why I pulled that here. But I also got to have my top five in order, so here we go. At number five, I have Funny People. I think this one is an underrated Apatow movie. I think a lot of people kind of let this one fly under the radar. Now, most people I talk to say they do enjoy it. But it's not one of the ones, at least from this time, I feel like his more recent movies, a lot of people don't talk about at all. The King of Staten Island is one that he just came out with that maybe he's getting a little more buzz, but I feel like he just kind of fell off the map and it wasn't even necessarily justified. But through his like peak, you know, that 2005 to 2015 range, I feel like this movie gets talked about probably the least and I don't understand it. Funny People is literally an accomplishment just for the fact alone that there was an Adam Sandler movie in the post 2000s that was good, that was a comedy. I might be lying when I said that, but off the top of my head, I, it might very well be true, as sad as that is. That was a hero of mine growing up, not so much later on. Um, Adam Sandler is actually really funny here. I think he's really good. He's a bit of a dick at times, especially in the beginning, but then, you know, of course, if you know the story, finds out he has like a rare form of leukemia, and then he runs upon who else but the god of all gods, Seth Rogen. And Seth Rogen in this movie is pretty funny. Not his most hilarious self, but he's still really good. And then you have these two unlikely comedians together. One, and Adam Sandler, that was a proven star that's kind of fell off and been humbled by life due to the leukemia. And also, of course, you know, people just not really getting into his shit anymore, which I think is, in a way, you know, it kind of goes off of, like, his real life. He probably could have tapped into some real emotions now i know his shit still sells i know there's the adam sandler fans just like whatever man y'all are just trying to be stuck up and act like y'all ain't into that anymore no for me personally i'm just not i can't speak for everybody else but at the end of the day he's not as beloved as he was when he was younger and that's not a hateful comment to adam sandler like i said he's one of my heroes just that's what happens in time few people stand the test of time look at the other big star from that time jim carrey obviously not loved as much anymore as sad as that is to say and to watch him kind of play a role that i think kind of plays into his real life and probably what he's going through that's kind of cool even though i will say this much i don't think adam sandler gives a shit that's why he keeps making these movies and he's still got a smile on his face in his uh basketball shorts and regular ass guy shirt he wears down i love that about him i give him that but him in this movie in general, man, I mean, he's solid. As I said, Seth Rogen's solid. Let's talk about Leslie Mann. She is always solid. I love that girl. Um, Eric Ban is in this one. I thought he did really well. And the movie in general, I like the ebb and flow of it. You know, watching this guy fall from glory and really, you know, try to right a lot of wrongs. Him kind of get vaulted back up and him turning back into a dick. But by the end of it, we get that you know, moment where him, Adam Sandler, that is, and Seth Rogen are just laughing together at the end. And it was a nice, you know, touching, wow, they actually did resolve it. In the end, comedy solves everything. Or does it? <sighs> funny People is a funny movie that you should watch. I enjoy it. At number four, this is one I have a little more limited knowledge on. Um, Freaks and Geeks. It felt wrong leaving it off. I know it's a TV show, but I mean, I've even done top five. NBA, no, I turned it into a top ten. Top ten NBA players on this shit. Every once in a while, I'll throw a wrench in, and with Judd Apatow, is hard leaving off Freaks and Geeks. Now, where, as I said, I have the least amount of knowledge about this one, 
I have seen it. That's why it's on my list. I've only watched it one time all the way through, and I loved it. Maybe with more watches, maybe it's about due for another watch because this was like eight years ago or something. Maybe long, maybe like ten years ago. Holy shit, time flies, people. But maybe with more watches, I believe I could enjoy it even more. Now, I mean, this one, the cast is just holy shit. Look at all these young cast members just before their fucking peak, man. Linda Cardellini just kills his lead. I forget her brother's name. He's solid. And then, of course, the array of other people, fucking James Franco, Seth Rogen. Although Seth Rogen's a little weird. Like, I feel like I'd... The, at least the other guys, I kind of maybe see a glimmer of something. When I watch Seth Rogen, it's not that he's bad. He just plays a good, weird kid, and I could have never imagined him turning into the Seth Rogen he is today. But here he is. <laughs> I don't know how to do a Seth Rogen laugh. I tried, though, right? Points. But the show overall is really well constructed, really well done, and it's one of those biggest shows that's just like, how did this show not get more time? Because to my knowledge, it ran for 12 episodes and got canceled before it even finished its 18 episode first season like the star power that was on that talk about not knowing what you had and i gotta tell you it's not just oh look at this cool show with all these great actors and they're young it's a well like i said constructed show very good felt weird listing judd apatow any things with output in this in here i guess freaks and geeks watch it if you can it might still be on netflix they like to take things off i don't know they like strippers Anyways, number three, a lot of people's favorite, 40 Year Old Virgin. This is one when I first saw it, I honestly, maybe it was like too early in that time where like we were just now getting this influx of comedy that is probably my favorite comedy ever now. You know, that comedy that was like, you know, funny, but it felt like there was a little bit more to the writing. There was a little bit more to the cinematography. It was like old school comedies were like just dumb jokes and you knew as a comedy you didn't expect all the rest. This was the start of like The Hangover even was big around that time. When The Hangover came in, Todd Phillips, he was making not just a comedy, he was making a movie. You know what I mean? And now we've seen him go on and do other things, no coincidence, like The Joker and things of that nature. Uh, but yeah, this one, it just was a little off-putting to me at first. I was like, this is good, but like, is this, is it a comedy? I mean, there's jokes in it. It just felt really weird to me the first time I saw it. But upon subsequent watches, this is easily a great comedy to me, dude. From all the fucking classic lines, it feels like a bag of sand. Talking about titties. Yeah, that gave it away, bro. Right there. Everything in this movie, him trying to put Steve Carell, it is trying to put on the condom. Fucking Paul Rudd, just amazing in this one, trying to bring over his porno tapes. And. Hey, I can relate to Steve Carell, I guess, a little bit in this one with all the fucking action figures and shit. But, I mean, it's just a great overall. You know, when it come out, 2005, somewhere in there? I want to say 2005. This is a great comedy, man. And even the scene with Kevin Hart, dude, where he's making a big fuss up in, like, the little store they all work in. I just, I have a ball with that. For show. Like, I mean, it's just, it's great. Not to mention, this was like Seth Rogen's first big role. One of the first one where he was the lead, but he was a big role in this. If y'all didn't know, which just might shock some of y'all, the first movie he was in was Donnie Darko. You know, one-off kind of performance. More in the background. Doesn't do a whole, whole lot. It's just, yeah, that guy I won't remember, right? And then you see him as the cameraman on Anchorman. Not in that movie a whole lot, right? I think it might even just be one scene, unless I'm going crazy. Which I'd have to be because Anchorman is one of my favorite comedies. But in this one, he gets a lot to play with. And I think you saw that in this one. Whereas you didn't really see it in Freaks and Geeks. In this, I was like, this guy's here to stay. He was borderline the most entertaining guy in the movie. And he didn't even necessarily have like the funniest jokes. There's just something about him. He had a presence to him that I was like, yeah, this guy is going to be something. And the yeah, rest is history. And how much further into history do we got to go? I'm talking current history, like where I'm at history. Number two, Knocked Up. Knocked Up is a great comedy, again, from Judd Apatow. I mean, this movie, from the second it starts, just has me locked in. I'm hooked in. I'm relating to the loser-type vibes of Seth Rogen. 
and I'm relating in a way too to just like that come up. Now I never really necessarily had problems with women, you know, like I wasn't like this geeky kid that was afraid to talk to girls, but I mean, neither is Seth Rogen in this movie, right? He shoots a shot, but I could see, you know, like a girl on the level of Catherine Heigl, dude. Now I've heard so many rumors about her in real life being a bitch true or untrue not sure you know who knows except the people that are there there's a lot of rumors out there i think even rumors that happen from this movie even more specifically but we're not talking about her because we're talking about the character she's playing and her personality in this movie even though she's a little crazy at times but hey that's women we know that by now right guys and how beautiful she is that's why i'm bringing her actual actress name into the picture because that's who she is who's playing the character she's a beautiful girl dude and for somebody like Seth Rogen to even get that shot, you know, that's talking about some consider me lucky type shit. And then, of course, the rest is history. They had the problem with the condom. She wakes up. He's sleeping naked with his ass up in the air. And she's like, what did I just do? But I'll tell you what you just did more than you even thought you did, because now Seth Rogen is about to have a baby with you. Yes, <laughs> that guy is about to have a baby with you. And what? And Sue's is just hilarity, dude. Like, I mean, what a crazy thing. Like, this type of thing has happened, I'm sure, so many times in the world where you think the wrong one knocks you up, but in the end, you end up caring about the person. You look past looks, you enjoy their personality, or you might even find them more attractive as time goes on. But I don't necessarily knee-jerk reaction. I could be horribly wrong. I don't remember a lot of movies like this, and it's such an easy concept to dive into, but sometimes being smart is just... Stop trying to come out with outlandish ideas. Think of the simplicity. And the simplicity of this movie, again, with the great writing and the great camera work, just truly makes it shine. It really does. And, uh, man, yeah, Seth Rogen, this is like his Oprah here. Everybody want to knock up Oprah, get that big bank. Got the girl that works for E, looking like a dime piece. Hell yeah, dude. Seth Rogen's character won out. And it didn't always seem like that, because there was a lot of bumps in the road, but... By the end of it, it's that happy ending that I don't necessarily always love, but Apatow always pulls it off in a great way. And then, at number one, my absolute favorite from him, and it's not even close, and this one isn't talked up enough, the somewhat sequel to 40 Year Old Virgin, This Is 40. This Is 40 is one of my favorite comedies of all time, and the biggest reason why I can say is just relatability. There's nothing I find funnier than relatable stuff. That doesn't even, ne ne not necessarily is set up as a joke. It's not set up as anything. You're just telling a story and you're just like, oh shit, I've been through that. And that's how I feel when I watch this movie. Every little thing, I'm just like, wow. Like, I feel like my future is happening <laughs> right before my eyes. Or, or I'm like, oh my God, that just happened the other day. There's so many things and quirks in this movie that really, really crack me up. Paul Rudd and Leslie Mann just steal the show, dude. They're amazing. And then you, you know, trickle it down. Kid actors, not always great. This is two of the best kid actors I've ever seen in a movie. The older sister, hilarious. Of course, she's watching Lost, with, which I'm a big fan of. So that's kind of like a cool, oh, yeah, and she's watching Lost. Little extra points there. And then the little sister, hilarious. Like when she comes to the room and she says that, I forget what it is, that something's got her and she like slowly drags herself away. I mean, come on, dude. That little kid acts her ass off. One thing that I thought was hilarious, too, isn't even necessarily like what I see me doing or what I envision myself doing more and more of the future is what I used to do. And by that, I mean dealing with the kids. When I see the oldest kid and they have taken away her phone or taken away her laptop, whatever it is, she can't watch Lost anymore. And she's like, ah, having a fucking fit. And I get that. I've been there. But what's hilarious to me is, like, how times have changed, dude. They're over here telling her, like, well, what am I going to do without a laptop? They're like, I don't, go outside. She's like, go outside? It's like, go climb a tree. Climb a tree? And what's hilarious about it is, is not the fact that, you know, obviously I told her to climb a tree. It's the fact that I legitimately believe that that is a reaction you'd get. And it wouldn't be like a climb a tree. Like, I don't feel like doing that. It would legitimately be in the vein of, that is the most preposterous thing I've ever heard. Why would I ever climb a tree? That generational gap that happened seemingly overnight 
people my age, I think, were like the last wave of it. It's just funny to watch, dude. And there's countless comedic moments in this movie that really ring true. I feel so much like, I mean, I look at my wife and my daughter. Uh, fucking Paul Rudd puts on some, like, Alice in Chains roosters. Like, yeah, you can vibe to this. Like, that's me. My wife and daughter, ruh, ruh, like a dungeon dragon. Except pop music and country. I'm already feeling myself in that moment and it's getting worse and worse and worse this is 40 is hilarious it's got all the good writing that Avatar movies normally do it's got all the good camera work for a comedy that all the Avatar movies normally do and then the relatability factor that's what sets it over the edge is my favorite Judd Apatow is a hell of a director and I try to stick to directorials on this one like I said I got a lot of producer credits also has some acting roles in there little cameos and what have you but in the end, I thought director was the way to go on John Apatow Films. Thank you, Adam Walls. Thank you, everybody in the group. Keep killing it. We're at almost at 1.5K members, which we're doing that giveaway. I think it isn't technically 1.5K members because it rounds up, but we're almost there, guys. We're about to do that giveaway, so be on the lookout for that. Maybe this is 40s in the mix. And tell me what y'all's top five is. Damn, love hearing those. See y'all later, man.